Shake Table Lab by Sophia Lake and Michael Spashevsky. Our building was inspired by a mix of both Michael and my sketches. My idea for our building was 36 centimeters tall. Michael and I were making the frame of the first floor and starting on the cross formations. We were also installing the uprights for the second floor. We were finally done with the frame for the second floor. Now Michael and I needed to add in the X formations. The X formations were already installed. Now we needed to put in the construction paper floors. The building structure was finished, so Michael and I wanted to start on the roof. We wanted to cover all the sides with paper. Our building was finally finished. It was 88.9 centimeters tall. Two sandbags were placed on each floor to test our building's strength. It succeeded in bearing the weight. We made X formations across the beams like so, because a cross makes four triangles. Triangles are stronger than squares. Posts were also made under each floor for more support. We bolted our building to the cardboard to help it stay up. The bolts lock the structure to the floor. The floors didn't bear well at first, so we placed supports under it to help bear the weight. If the supports don't stay, the building would be in great danger of collapsing. Tape was used to connect straws in securing the bottom. For example, we used tape to create an X formation crossing between beams. We also taped the straws through the hole support so it can stand stronger. There was construction paper for the floors and roof. We were also given extra straws to help with our roof. Some leftovers we were used to create the supports. Our tower survived the first minor earthquake. It was holding four sandbags. No signs of breaking yet. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. A major earthquake occurred after several others. Our tower fell, but it was able to hold 18 sandbags. The x-axis of the graph shows how much the tower moved side to side. The y-axis of the graph shows how much the building moved forward and backward. The z axis of the graph was used to show how much how much the tower went up and down. Hi, I'm Sophia Lake and this is the tower that Michael and I built. It was able to support 18 sandbags, almost breaking the record. The reason why it fell down was because the supports at the bottom started to bend and the entire tower started leaning on some of the cross on the cross beams. If I wanted to change that, I would have added more supports on the bottom so that the entire weight of the tower wouldn't lean to the side. I learned that using some of your extra materials, you can have your, have your tower last for much longer. We use some of our extra straws to create the supports on, on our base level and second level. My favorite part was that, was that watching our tower pass by so many rounds of shaking. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michael Spashevsky, and this is Sophia and I's Shake Table Tower. Our tower held a total of 18 sandbags, 9 on each level. The parts that failed the first were the side pillars and the cross beams. If I could do anything to change about this tower, I would definitely reinforce them with tape. If I could reinforce the cross beams and the side pillars with more tape, our tower probably would have held another round of sandbags. What I learned about making an earthquake-proof building was that you need to have a strong base. If you don't have a strong base, then all of your stories will collapse. Again, if the top story collapses, it's fine. You could just put the sandbags on the bottom story. But if the bottom story, the base, collapses, then the top story will fall down with it. 
I had a lot of fun with this project. The, probably the most fun part for me was watching our tower collapse and watching the tower just survive so many rounds of sandbags and just having that adrenaline rush. Thank you for watching.